today I am pushing Mac well outside her comfort zone. So Mac is learning how to kite. This is her very first time. So I've done this a little bit, so it's gonna be cool to see what it's like uh, doing it for the very first time. So she's gonna have all the beginner questions. She's gonna be, I think she's a little nervous, but <laughs> she's excited at the same time, which is awesome. Um, so it was meant to be me learning how to kite and showing you guys and Jen running through with me, but I've injured my back. Well, it's a previous injury. And it's just flared up a little bit, so I didn't want to push it. So that means Mac is going to do all the learning for a very first time. Uh, Jen's running her through everything she needs to know, how to kite, um, kite safety, flying the trainer kite, all that sort of stuff. So it's gonna be cool to see Mac do that for the, her very first time. I'm excited to be behind the camera again. It's been a while since I've actually been behind the camera and had a subject to shoot. Um, Last time I did it, it was probably with Julian. Julian. So some of you probably know where this is. Uh, we're at Tabari, uh, just south of Ulladulla. Uh, this is where Mac is going to learn how to kite for the first time. We've got some decent wind, uh, a little bit of cloud cover, which makes it a little bit easier to film. Still a bit glary, as you can see, I can't really open my eyes though. I better catch up. Um, so when we're in the car park, it wasn't as windy. Now we're out at the beach, uh, I think Mac's getting a little bit more nervous. <laughs> uh, yeah, so the first thing we do when we want to go out kiting is we've done our forecasting and we know that today is going to have good northeast winds according to the forecast, right, which is perfect for, for kite surfing um, off this beach on the east coast of Australia, right? And um, But then when we get to the beach, it's important to collect um, actual information, not just what's forecasted so I jumped on my phone and um, checked Seabreeze which is a great app and that tells us all of the wind sensors along the coast and the closest ones to here there's one at Ulladulla up there okay and then there's also Maruya and I like the Maruya one because that's at the airport and airports always have really good weather stations so you know that if you've got um, a sensor at an airport it's going to be very accurate because it needs to be for planes so I know that we've got about 13 to 17 knots out there which is that's a great wind speed for learning on for learning we want sort of you know around that 12 knot to you know under 20 knot mark so this is going to be a perfect day mac we've great. scored <laughs> yeah yep when you're ready yeah so um so mac we've gotten out here to the beach right yep. and so now we need to sort of do some observations look around for any dangers or obstacles that we want to stay away from right okay. so what are, what are some obstacles you can see around here have all a look around. All of the stuff on the ground? Yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, uh, you know, debris on top of the surface of the sand, like sticks and seaweed and all sorts of things that would get caught in our line. So that doesn't look like the best place to go unless we want to spend the time and move it all and clear an area, right? Which yeah, can right. be done. Have a look behind you. Have a look upwind. We call it upwind when we're looking into the wind. What dangers can you see upwind of us right now? All of the humans. Uh, humans, people, kids, yeah, other beach users. Um, and we want to make sure they have a really good time on the beach. We don't want to be too close to them, um, you know, and put them in a danger area. So we looking around, we've also got some water over here. We've got waves out there. We've got rocks and reef, right? There's all sorts of things that we need to uh, be aware of. But today we're just going to start off with flying a trainer kite. So we just need a, a big open area where we can fly our kite with no sticks and seaweed and no people. What do you think about over there? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, that looks good. So Mac, today we are going to fly a kite called an ignition. 
Okay, it's a, it's a trainer kite by Ozone that is super safe and easy to fly. Great okay? news. <laughs> I, give, I give this to little kids to fly, right? I've had people um, start about seven or eight years old, these little girls with skinny spaghetti arms. So it's not about strength. Okay. It's about finesse, and right. girls are good at that, right? So okay. we've got that on our side already. So this is what we get in the packet, right? Okay. We get a kite. Do you want to hang on to that, right? And then we've got a bar and lines here. And then we've got a leash, right? A leash which is attached to the kite so that when we let go of the bar, it doesn't, doesn't fly away. Mm -hmm. And then you've got these little elastic pieces that go over the ends to hold the lines on, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to go and set up the kite down here and then we'll walk the lines back, back to us, okay. right? Now we can see that the top of the kite up there with the black mesh, that's called the leading edge and that leads into the wind, right? If we hold it up here, see how it leads into the wind and the wind fills up the kite through that mesh, right? That's yep. the leading edge. This is called the trailing edge. And the trailing edge doesn't have any holes in it. It seals that air in there. And that's at the back of the kite. At the sides here, you and I, we're hanging onto the wing tips. Okay. The wing tips, right? So there's gonna be two wing tips. One's white, one's orange. So that you've got a left and a right side of the, the kite. And you can see the kite has all of these bridle lines. These are called bridle lines, which are attached to the kite underneath. And if we have a quick look on top of the kite, see how there's no lines. Yeah. All right, so that's the top. This is the underneath, right down with the top of the kite against the sand and the trailing edge towards us. Now, where's the wind coming from? Behind us. Behind us, exactly. So we want the wind at our back. And what we're going to do is we're just going to put a little bit of sand along that trailing edge. Do you want to do it along your edge? Just a little bit right along the edge. Have a look at mine. See? Oh, yeah. Just have it right along that edge there. We want to make sure that we don't get too much sand inside of the kite, right? So we want to sort of keep the sand away from that leading edge and keep the sand down near this trailing edge. And that's just so that we can hang on to it. Go all the way to the end of the wingtip there. That's it. And then you want to hold that in the same hand as you hold the bar, okay. right? So that it gets out of the way and doesn't get tangled. And what we're going to do is we're going to walk the lines upwind and you're going to unravel them we don't want to pull on the kite, so use your other hand to, that's it. Wind them out. How many lines have you got there? Three. Three, exactly. So trainer kites sometimes come with two lines. I prefer the third line model, which is the modern version, because that third line is actually a safety line. So you've got two lines. What colour are they? Red, blue and white. Red, blue and white, exactly. So the red line is always on the left side of the kite, right? Um, and that red is also what they, the colour for port when you're talking sailing and port and starboard. So port is left, port is red. And so we can continue those colours. Most brands continue those colours in their lines as well. Excellent. So now that you've walked your lines out, can we see all the way to the kite? There's no twists and tangles, right? Can we see this line here? Oh, it's seaweed. Look, see how oh, it's going yeah. around those lines? It's hard to see the white one here. So we need, actually need to come around there. See how it's still, it's still yeah. twisted up, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna walk our lines back and make sure that they're not twisted and tangled, okay? So let's place it down on the ground here with the red on the left. Yep. Yep, yep, just leave it there. And I want you to step one foot either side and lift up the three, three lines like this. Okay. So I'm just gonna undo this line and we're gonna untwist it, there we go. That looks good, doesn't it? Stay, yep. stay there. And I'm going to teach you pretty much the only knot you need to know in kite surfing. Okay. Okay. And this is the same on all the big kite surfing kites. No matter what kite you get, all the kites are attached to their lines the same way with, in the same method. Okay. So when they come new, you're going to have one end with a knot. Yep. One end with a loop. 
okay, and we need to attach them together. So what we do is we actually pass the line back through the loop to make a bigger loop like that, pass the knot through it, pull it tight and slide it into position. Right. Okay. Cool, huh? Yep. That looks good, right? Excellent. All right, I think we are good to fly. Let's, let's head back to the kite. So the main thing is making sure that there's no twists and tangles in the line. Okay. This is the number one priority for safety when we're flying kites. Woo! You ready? <laughs> I do. It's your turn. All right, so the first thing we want to do is switch the leash over. So there's a little ball that you hold here. It's always good to have a kite buddy. I'm holding oh, that see, so yeah. you can get that on. Make sure you get it on nice and tight because you've got little wrists. Yeah. The most important thing about flying a kite is being ready to let go at any time. Okay. Okay. Letting go is not failing. Letting go is landing the kite. Yep. Okay. And if you're just a little unsure or a little overpowered or the kite's about to crash into the ground, if you let go of the bar, it just reduces all the power out of the kite and it won't slam into the ground and it won't get damaged, right? Okay. So just the first maneuver is just to grab, grab the kite, get it to you, launch it. Yeah. And then let go. Okay. Okay? We're doing that now. Let's go. That's what you're doing, yeah? <laughs> okay. Hands even on the bar. Ready? Hang on. Woo! Yeah, girl. <laughs> yep, steer it up. A little bit of blue, a little bit of red. There we go. Now let go. Let go. I feel bad. It feels wrong to let it, it go. <laughs> it so does. And I'm so glad you brought that up because it it feels wrong to let go and so a lot of people don't want to let go yeah and if they don't let go they get dragged down the beach and so people's sort of worst nightmare is being dragged down the beach <laughs> but you can avoid that by letting go letting go and so that's why i'm going to get you to let go a few times so you get used to it okay because it, it doesn't come naturally letting go <laughs> okay you ready yep two hands uh. that's it all right let's see if you can hold it up there at sort of 12 o'clock Excellent. As you're holding there, you'll find that your neck starts to get sore. <laughs> right? If you're just staring up at the sky, you're either going to have sun glare in your eyes or your neck's going to get sore. So as you're doing that, look down and that's going to start teaching you to go by feel on the kite so you can feel what it's doing. Yeah. We don't have to look at it. Our eyes don't control the kite, our hands do. Now is that pulling you very hard? No. No. Right? Quite easy to hang on to? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> okay, let's bring it over to one o'clock. Not too bad. You're getting, yeah, getting good control. This is bar control. Excellent. Let's see if we can bring it across to 11. Nice and slowly. Across to 11. That's it. Oh. And see if we can hold it there. <laughs> if you can start doing a bit of a figure of eight. That's it. Bring it back. All the way across to 11, Ooh. pull the blue, <laughs> red, yeah, there you go, nice and slow, you don't have to go quite that fast. Uh, What's happening to your power now? It's getting more. More, power, more power, right. So the more we move the kite, the more power we create. Back. Woohoo! Yeah, right? Woohoo! You're, you're controlling it already, actually, you, you are doing better than about 80% of people right now, <laughs> right? This is excellent. You've got really good control. There was a gust. Okay, are you ready for the next? That is a gust. Feel the gust? Yeah. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is I want you to bring it down to 10 o'clock. Okay. <laughs> so you went to 11, so now bring it a little bit lower. So this is, this is one side of the wind window, right? We're over at 10 o'clock over here. Yep. And you can see we've sort of got the outside of the window goes the opposite way. So let's bring it, let's bring it over Jack now, bring it down to sort of two o'clock. So you, we're finding the edge of the wind window, right? And when we have the kite right on the edge of the wind window like you're doing, yeah. it's spilling a lot of power. Yeah. So it doesn't, we don't have too much power over there, right? It's not pulling you too hard. No, compared to the other side. It should be pulling very similar because we're at the edge of the window okay. on one side of the window and then you've got the edge on the other. Excellent. Is that pretty easy to keep it there? Yeah. Relatively easy, right? Yeah. That's excellent. So now what I want you to do is bring it back over to the other side. Let's bring it down to 10 o'clock. Okay. 
and I want you to start moving it between 10 and 11, 10 and 11. Yep, back to 10. That's it. Back down. So give it a little bit of blue to come up, a little bit of red to come back down. See if you can start going just a little bit faster and you'll start to see it's pulling you, right? Yeah. Right, and so let's, let's take a step that way, the way it's trying to pull us. Let's see if we can actually walk a little bit. <laughs> Keep flying it, that's it, walking, that's it. You're going one way. Woo! Nice. <laughs> So really get in the nice soft sand and make sure your feet are sort of, you know, planted in that sand. Get them in there, yep. And just bring it up to 12 o'clock to start with. Uh. Yep. Gonna get you to make your hands just a little bit wider. Yeah, there you go. That's it. Okay. <laughs> Lean against it, you've got to use your body weight. That's it, plant those feet. That's it, blue, red, <laughs> blue. That's it, red, <laughs> be ready for it. And, yeah, lean. Really bend your knees, bend at your waist. See, so you, so, whoa, oh, no. that's all right, you got it. Take a few steps back, excellent. Red, blue. Red, blue. Just think about one line or the other. <coughs> and lean, use your whole body weight. That's it. Yes, that's better. Yes. It's all timing, right? Yeah. All timing, and there's a slight delay in the kite from when you tell it to turn. So you've got to tell it to do what you want early. That's it. Nice. Pull the red. Yep. Good job. Okay, looking good. Let's bring it over to two o'clock. And just hold it there for a second until you're ready. That's about one. Bring it a little bit lower. A little bit lower. Yeah, about there, right? And then when you're ready, you pull red hard and then blue hard. <laughs> okay. Okay, pull red, now blue. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, girl! Yeah, great job! First go! Nice, do it again. Oh my God. That was excellent. That's it, a little bit lower. That's it. Blue. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> mate, always make sure you pull on that blue. That was, that was, it worked. It You're just a little bit late, right? Okay. You need to pull on that blue a little bit sooner. And the other, the other thing to avoid is when we're trying to get up, sometimes we can pull in on both. Oh yeah. Right? Like mostly blue. You want to okay. make sure you relax okay. your red, like you pulled the red and now pull the blue. Right? And use my weight on the blue. On the blue. <laughs> exactly. That was excellent. Let's do that one more time. Okay. Just be aware, Jack, you are right on the zone. <laughs> Heads up. <laughs> okay. Excellent. Blue. Oh, not, not bad, not bad. Maybe a little too early on that one. On the blue? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's do one more on that side and then we'll switch to the other. Excellent. Blue. Oh, yeah. that felt way better. Yeah, that was much better. Very controlled, right? Yeah. Felt more controlled? Felt, yeah. Back we need to pack up our kite, right? Mm -hmm. How do we get to our kite? Yeah. All right, you've got a couple of choices here, right? One, if you've got a kite buddy, 
which you do today, you got me with you. you say, hey kite buddy, can you go and grab my kite for me? Okay. And I would run down there and grab the kite and bring it back to you. Okay. But what if you were down here and you wanted to practice on your own? How would, you, how would we actually do that? And how we do that is we would need to have a, um, you know, like a tent spike or something we could stick oh. into the ground, yep. right? Because then we would be able to put our leash around it and then we can go and get our own kite. Now maybe we can find something MacGyver style <laughs> around here. You know, there's quite a, quite a few pieces of wood, you know, so one that's strong enough and two that we can get deep, in, deep enough in the sand. But if we stick that... Yeah, it's not super good, that one. Maybe we'd have to dig a little bit deeper. On snow, I like to uh, use a shovel. Right, we can sho get a shovel into, into, the, into the ground, get it in nice and deep. So you've just got to be prepared that if you are coming out by yourself to make sure you've got some sort of anchor mm -hmm. that you can put on it. So now what you would do is you would put your wrist leash over the stick. <laughs> make sure it's nice and low there. Right. All right, now run. Let's go. <laughs> Okay, once we get to the kite, we always want to handle it from behind the kite. So we would come around this side. And what I tend to do is I'll just grab one wing tip and I'll walk oh, yeah. forwards. Okay. You want to try that? Grab a wing tip and walk towards the kite. That's it. Therefore, you've now taken the pressure out of the kite. At this point here, now we can just fold it in half. Like that, like we're folding sheets, right? right? Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much fold it in half there. Come down to the ground. And if we fold it in half one more time, like that. Okay, we can then, we can actually start to roll the kite up. The other thing I like to do is I like to get these lines here in the Velcro, oh. right? You remember when we first started those lines were in the Velcro there? We just shove them in there, then we'll have less tangles for next time. We want to just shove all those bridle lines inside the flaps of the kite. Sometimes we can't do it that neatly at the beach if it's really windy or if it's blowing sand all over the place or snow all over the place. We just want to get it packed up nice and quickly yep. and we can always redo it back at, at home. So then grab that, we'll go back up to our bar. So now the method that I used is I'll put the kite between my legs so I can hold it together and then I'm able to reach down and grab the bar. Okay. Okay. What we want to do is pull that safety line through until you get to the bead. That's it. And then hold that leash in the same hand that you are holding the bar. So you're keeping it out of the way. Now what we want to do is grab all three lines and start at one side oh. and we're going to start wrapping it around the bar ends in a figure of eight. There you go. So one way on one side, other way. So we're creating that figure of eight motion. That's going to stop the lines getting any twists or tangles in it and keep it nice and neat. Over time, you'll develop your own style of how you pack up your bar and lines. I can always tell which ones I've packed up in my car and which ones my husband did. <laughs> We've both got a little bit of a different style. They all work as long as you can, you make sure that you don't have any tangles for next time. Okay, once you're getting close to the kite, that's the time when you want to pull those little pieces of elastic on the edge of the bar. That one there, pull it up, out and over. And that's going to hold the lines on the bar so that they don't slip off the ends. Perfect. That wasn't too hard, was it? It's pretty good. What a great, great <laughs> fun day flying kite to the beach. Well done, Matt. Thanks, Jenny. All right, let's. I've uh, got our bags over here.
welcome to the Mac and Jack show. Well, how'd you go? Good, I think. Yeah? I feel like I, I was very intimidated, I'm not going to lie, to start with. But uh, I, don't, I don't know, there's something about Jenny's teaching. She just, she made me feel very calm and in control the entire time. Yeah. There was no point where I was like, I'm going to lose control, I don't know what I'm doing because... I don't know. She's just a great teacher. Mm. Like she spoke me through everything at the right time. She gave me cues at the right time. Yeah. We're blocking a footpath, so we'll be quick. Um, yeah, it was easier to handle than you thought, wasn't yes. it? Yes. Yeah, definitely. Would you do it again? Yes. Like awesome. I only did it on the beach. Yeah. <laughs> like, but now that I've done that, I definitely appreciate watching Jenny out in the surf doing it because I realised like how much technique there is behind it. Yeah. So it's, you've got to control the kite, uh, especially out there, you've got to control the kite, surf, and do both at the same time. So you, like, yeah, yeah there's it a took, lot involved. Yeah, it was a lot more mind-body connection involved than I anticipated. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's good. I enjoyed it. Jenny's the best teacher I have ever had. Thanks, Jen. <laughs>